everyone, it's GT time. I'm your moderator, Kyle Bossman, and joining us as always is our uniquely talented and knowledgeable panel, including Brandon Jones. I review games and other things. Daniel Bloodworth. Yep. In the super seat this week, Michael Huber. Hello. Oh. I was going to say hola, but then I said hello. <laughs> Making it all happen in the booth, <laughs> Ian Hink. Hi. You all are cracking me up with your intros today. Oh. First of all, why why I I review games and other things? It's that time of year which it feels like all I do. It's just one movie right. from one review to another. We like we like Rochambeau for a review the other day, but they're like, why are you reviewing that? I'll review, okay, well you review that and I'll take this now. Swap. Review swap. Is that what a Rochambeau is? No. Hey, isn't that Rochambeau? Well, I guess so, but I don't see how that applies. I always think of South Park. Kick to the nuts. That's Rochambeau. Whoever <laughs> falls on their knees first loses. <laughs> so we don't know what, officially we don't know what Rochambeau means. Is it it like, it's just rock, paper, scissors. Speaking right? of corrections. Yeah, is it like, uh, what you call it from the deer hunter? Roulette. Russian That's roulette. Russian roulette. That's Russian roulette. <laughs> Different than that. <laughs> Come What's on, a, Jimmy. Is there a Russian Rochambeau? So a Rochambeau? <laughs> you were... As you are in the super seat, this question, we have a very serious question for you. Would you rather be a new Power Ranger or a new Ninja Turtle? New Ninja Turtle. Why? Because Ninja Turtles are better than Power Rangers. Okay, so here's the thing you get as the, becoming one of the new Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be you, you can be Michael Huber, you'll be accepted as part of the team, or mm -hmm. we can give you a canister of ooze, and you can mutate yourself with any animal you could feasibly find. Canister of ooze. Okay, then what are you mutating with? A bear. Oh, oh, it's dude. Yeah. Yep. So there's like a bear Huber mm -hmm. and you're joining the Ninja Turtles. I can't remember yeah. a bear in there. Yeah, that's a good pick. What were Bebop and Rocksteady? Uh, a rhino and a, or and a, a warthog. Boar, yeah. Yeah. A warthog. Yeah. warthog, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be buddy. I'd have an uneasy alliance with them, but still have allegiance <laughs> with the turtles. Hold on. What do you mean by that? Like they I hate the turtles. I know. But they have a mutual respect we, yeah. with, with Huber. Huber. Hugh Bear. Yeah, because we're not Hugh Bear. Because we're not turtles. <laughs> I knew there was something in there, but I couldn't get yeah. Hugh Bear. Damn it's you. Like Hugh Bear. Damn it. It's like Casey Jones. If April O'Neil was never there, Casey Jones would have an uneasy alliance. It's like capital H, lowercase u, all caps, B E A R. This is so Exclamation point. And I think you might be the guy who, like, really, like, Builds that bridge, maybe convinces them to stop hanging out with Shredder. Yeah. Yeah, brings them over to the fold, onto the good side. Cool. Awesome. More yeah. powerful than ever before. Well, that's the thing. It's like if Shredder gets kidnapped Oof. by someone that the turtles also want to stop. And so it's like, mm -hmm. well, we might as well work together. Yes. Thus meeting the bear. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for taking that question seriously, Huber. We do have to move on to corrections. Uh, begin corrections music, please. Uh, Michael Bay did not direct the most recent Ninja Turtles movie, he merely produced it. Interesting. Okay. Uh, while Patch Adams is mostly based off of the real life Patch Adams life, a viewer has assured me that he never had a girlfriend uh, that was murdered, so I shouldn't feel bad for that character. Which is a weird thing. If a, if a made up character in a, in a based on a true story gets murdered, should you feel bad? I still feel bad. But at least that wasn't a real person in real life. Uh, only two out of nine Far Cry games star a douche bro dude bro. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. It's just like those two more recent ones, but otherwise... Just, really, just what, two and three. What is dude three bro and classification? Four. Did three you just look at a picture of the guy and go like... Have you played mm, three? No, dude bro. There was no debate whether three was a dude bro yeah. or not. Yeah. The main guy of three, all of his friends, they're all douche bros. Even I just the wonder girls. How, can, yeah, can, I mean, they're just like, can you tell really them looking at a picture of, of like dude bro. Have you seen the show Ghost Adventures? Yes. The main guy of that with the totally. spiky hair is totally. a douche bro. Yeah. Well, the funny no, 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 it's a dude bro. Douche bro is not a thing. We can't. I, that was dude a bro and up. douche bro. They're both the same. Oh man. But the thing like, is, I imagine the ghosts giggling. Yeah, they're, they're like, like, we're not gonna, like, we're not gonna I, show I kinda, up for this say something. asshole. He's been talking for two hours. Like, no, just don't, don't. It's yeah. so good. This guy's such a weirdo. <laughs> what it, the funny thing is too is like, it's one of those things where he's not on the cover. You don't really see much of him. It's first person game. So like, when you do see a picture of him, it's like, wait, that's me? Yeah, you're like, oh, gross. <laughs> what? Far Cry Four is definitely not a dude, bro. Wasn't he? Far Cry 4 is one of the dude bro games. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're there to spread the yeah. ashes of your dead mother. Yeah, it's I don't like, really think no, no. dude bro thing to do. You're, yeah. not, you're not there to spread the ashes of your dead mother. You're there to spread the ashes of my dead mother. <laughs> 
and get some brewski. That one's a stretch. <laughs> Four is a stretch. I appreciate the clarification. <laughs> uh, Dragon Quest Heroes, the world trees woe and the blight below is not the first Dragon Quest Heroes game, so it couldn't be called Dragon Quest Heroes. Um, ben, ben and I basically... Ben first, but the, the best name that this should have had was Dragon Quest Warriors. Disagree. Yeah. A lot of commenters gave Ian a hard time for his pronunciation of Warwick Davis. Because you hit that d that second W. Oh, it's, it's not it's just not Warwick. Warwick Davis? No, it's like Warwick. Yeah, it's oh. in England it's Warwick. I don't know anything about that person. Wait, no. is there not a second W? There, there is. is. You just don't pronounce it, I guess. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, CompUSA right. was Thank a you. thing. Uh, CompUSA! Wait, Hubert remembers yeah, sure. it? Yes! When did that come up? When I talked, did we not know that CompUSA was We talked was about a store? PC retailers, and I said, is CompUSA oh. a thing? And then there was like three seconds of silence, and we continued. Oh, yes. <sighs> yeah, it, it is a thing. Wow. Hubert, wait, like, do you love CompUSA? I re remember it fondly. I've always just gone in there, looking at the parts, looking at the <laughs> graphics cards, looking at the PC games. I definitely bought PC games at CompUSA. Man, huge sure. boxes. Steam put PC game sales out of business, like... Target, I think, has a PC game section, and it's just like The Sims is yeah, half of it, and sure. then Blizzard is the bottom half, <laughs> and then a couple there's, just like uh, farm like simulators, CD discs in there. there just yeah, there's there's a loose. lot of. There's also like a huge collection of those like <laughs> hidden hidden item games, yeah. like mystery. Oh, yeah. I spy. Item. Well, no, yeah. no, like. Murder mystery, like find the clues. Like games, games. that come preloaded. Like Batman on your and Robin computer. Activity Center. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or like Sacra Terra. So it's not dead yet. Uh, <laughs> lastly, Anders has come back. So we've had a lot of debate over the last few corrections about how valuable a solid state hard drive is uh, for oh, a PlayStation God. 4. Uh, this is a very long comment. So we're going to have Brandon, <clears throat> uh, professional voiceover. Uh, personality, uh, read through this entire comment from Anders. I try to have as little personality as possible. <clears throat> I never said SSD doesn't increase performance. It totally does. What I was talking about was the difference in gains between upgrading from the stock 5400 RPM HDD to SDD Contra upgrading to an SSHD SSD HDD hybrid, which also reduces access times which gives almost as much of a performance increase as going to an SSD, but also gives you several times as much storage space per dollar. According to tests by Digital Foundry, going even going from the stock 5400 RPM HDDD to a 7200 7, RPM HDD gives almost as much performance increase in most cases. In fact, they recommended just going with the larger 5400 RPM drive instead due to the lack of significant performance increases. But don't take my word for it. <laughs> there is a link to a Digital Foundry's tests, including videos comparing load install times with stock 7200 RPM SSHD and SSD drives. The SSD wins, but usually only by a second or two, and with the dollar GB price that is about five times higher, it's really hard to justify unless you're paying just for bragging rights. It definitely isn't the huge change in performance you get by switching from HDD to SSD on your computer. Clearly, access time isn't the chief limiting factor for load times, because then we would see huge improvements when switching to SSD. But as we clearly see, that is just not the case. So perhaps it isn't the limited bandwidth of SATA 2 or even SATA 3. Might not have made a difference, I will grant that. It may be something else in how games are strictly optimized for the stock drive that limits performance gains. But the fact remains that PS4 users will find a significant reduction in loading times by upgrading to an SSD is simply not true, as shown by real-world tests. PS, for what it's worth, uh, wait, for what it's worth, computer engineer here is not is actually not worth anything at all. Presenting actual facts, analysis, and empirical data on the specific problem, however, is. PPS, computer engineer here too. Not that it matters. End correction music. <laughs> so I think that's, wow. the, that's the end well of the said. saga, right? That's it? That's the end no, of that the whole other saga? Guy, the other guy is for sure coming back at that. <laughs> <laughs> they oh. called him out. Yeah. Long story, TLDR I'll read that one is like you can buy a cheaper hard drive for your PS4 that will improve its speed just as much as solid state or almost as much as solid state drive would be. Is also the SATA, TLDR. I think. SATA. SATA, yeah. SATA. SATA. So Un wait, unprofessional. The, the person was saying that you need a 7200 RPM hard drive and that's better that than That gives an you SSD? a good boost. It's not better than an SSD, but it gives you a similar boost. Right. For, for, way, for dollar, way less money. dollar to way load yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. That's our TLDR. The only thing I bought on Black Friday last year was a solid state drive for my computer. Whoa. That's all I got. Dude, I big put item. On a computer, I think <laughs> I think they said that on a computer it's, mm -hmm. it's a big it's, yeah, cuz I massive put, boost, yeah. Yeah, I put an SSD in my MacBook Pro from 2010 where the uh, CD drive used to be. 
world of difference. I put mm-hmm. some more RAM in there too. It's like a new machine. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, with, 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 uh, with sure, as long as I'm in the same region, like if I fast travel, it just like fades to black and then I'm there. All right, everybody, that's been Tech Talk. We'll see you next week <laughs> yeah. here on Game Chiller. All right, so let's talk about video games. Uh, oh, boy. we're So normally I like to lead with a big game. I like to lead with the big news from a big game. Uh, we don't have that this week, but I think that this is actually a really interesting story uh, in, in how we can talk about it. Rise of Incarnates has al- is already dead. It's already, it's, it was announced in 2014, released officially in July 1st of this year, uh, just Thursday, uh, taken off of Steam, and on December 15th will be shut down Oh, so officially. you can't even, like, download it now right if you now, haven't already? Yeah, if you were curious about it, yeah, oh, you man, can't go to Steam. Oh, man, I was going to jump in. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, something about I, a game getting canceled that just makes me yeah. want to play it. And I, I only listen to bands that have already broken up, and I only play games that were canceled. Well, you got to super hipster. You know what you can do is buy someone's Steam account who yeah. already has this. Uh, I think that a lot of people listening and viewing this are already asking, "What is Rise of Incarnates?" Right. I know. I, I definitely knew what it it's was. It's like a multiplayer action like combat game, but it's. I, I'm still like not that clear on how it works. Um, and it feels like it feels like one of those games which is like, oh, we'll just put this out there and see what happens. And what happens is nobody knew anything about it, and uh, so they didn't play it. So yeah, it's free to play. It was, or fr- it is a free to play. I don't know if it, it's a was or is yet uh, from Bandai Namco, and this was a team like it's one of their best teams. It's what their fighting games team. Hmm. Uh, who's been working on Tekken and the Soul Calibur games and things like that. This was a big budget game, to, to be clear to everyone who's just hearing about it for the first time. Rise of Incarnates was PC only, was free to play, and it's just dead. Launching in July and then getting shut down in October is brutal. Well, you saying free to play now, actually, I think is the only thing that's really been applied to this game that gives it any kind of uniqueness whatsoever, right? It's just a... No, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's just actually an arena a pretty based. unique looking game. Like, if you watch footage, it's like, what is going on? Like, it feels like you have to get your hands on it to understand how it plays. Um, oh, yeah. The, but I think it's that ambiguity that but know, it's, ultimately was his but death now. No, what was its death is it was no, there was no awareness. Like, we kind of knew it was coming out this year. And then it's like, oh, it's, it's out? Oh, okay. You, you know, it was, there was no, like, marketing or build up or, or any reason to like entice people and inform people that this thing was out there. Yeah, uh, I should say actually, I think the team most responsible for it is the Gundam Versus team. You know, those games are huge successes in Japan. I wonder if this was like a, well, let's make Gundam Versus work in the US. Let's not use Gundams. Let's use these crazy, freaky characters who turn into... It has like a Marvel name. Rise of the Incarnates. Yeah. Yeah, what was... Oh, I want to be clear, though. <laughs> important distinction, at least in my mind. Sure. It is not called Rise of the Incarnates. Yeah, it's Rise called Rise in- of Incarnates, okay. which is that, stupid. I think what you're thinking of is Rise of the Imperfects. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the... Yeah, I, I was... <laughs> There, I didn't there, realize there, until now there, how there similar were, those There were wheels are. spinning in the back of my head that's like, I don't want to ask that question, but <laughs> yeah. what game was that? Because yeah. I remember that thing was terrible. Oh my god, it's Marvel the same Marvel Nemesis, title. right? Yeah. That yeah. was a whole other thing. Oh yeah. man. No, no, I think it was Marvel Nemesis. Oh, Marvel Nemesis. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm it was going to be a whole oh, franchise. Of, uh, the 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 the, the, the uh, X-Men game you were playing, X-Men... Destiny. Destiny. The Destiny uh, yeah. yeah. Good right. game. Okay. Not bad. Got all that straight. Silicon right. Knights. They got it right, kind of. Oh, it's so stinky, though. Um, <laughs> so I don't want to talk about Rise of Incarnates too much, because obviously none of us played it. None of us were going to. Uh, I want to talk about these types of games, because I feel like this happens a lot. I feel like there are these types of games where we can sniff it out. We can look at a trailer and say, oh, that won't work. They spent a lot of money on something stupid. Do you feel like, do, Am I the only one who feels like this happens a lot? I, I, don't, I didn't feel that way from this, but I just... I didn't feel like I knew enough or like it was ready. Like it was just, oh, that looks really cool. I'd like to know more about that. And then later on, it's like, oh, it, that's, they put that out. Blood, okay. there, there was a time in this game's life where you said that looks cool? Yeah. What looked uh, cool about yeah. it? Just, just yeah. some of the trailers, the footage. Just, yeah. Just, to to just, me. Some of that footage, baby. Really? You too? No, just, that's, that's, just, that's all I said. <laughs> I, feel, I feel crazy right now because I feel no, like... The, 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 the environment of the first fight I saw in this game, I was immediately turned off. It, it looked like a, the city from Devil May Cry 2. It was just this very kind of vacant 
like, oh, there's, these buildings got destroyed, and so these guys are kind of fighting around. Yeah. I, w- I was curious, like, how the game worked, because there's, like, weird transformations and stuff. Right. Like, they'll turn into, like, you know, like, weird monsters, or, like, a big giant mech will come in, and they'll pilot that around. And that seemed crazy, but it's just, like, that kind of... Like, you know, uh, it's the kind of thing where, like, it's like a sound bite where you laugh at it the first time, and then the 50th time you hear it, you're just like, that just doesn't work anymore. It's just like, this game might be fun the first time I play as a character, but then, you know, why would I actually spend time with this? So it's, it's why I brought up that you, when you were talking about free to play, it was like, oh, that seems to be a thing you could actually attach to the game as like a reason you should play it. Yeah. Aside from just like, hey, if you like fighting games, here's another one. It seems like a Killer Instinct kind of thing where, like, it launched. We're like, we're more we're gonna add more to this game, and that's what they're canceling. It's like we're not gonna add any more to this. So game. Wait, is it or not as much as we thought we were going to. MOBA? It's a two v two fighting game. Oh, weird. two. But v2. it's like an arena. Yeah. It's not like yeah. side by side or anything. Right. Yeah. 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 So a three D arena. Huh. Two v two. That sounds kind of cool. That's weird. Does that sound cool? You and a buddy. Would eight. you have given Rise of Incarnates a chance, Huber, or did it? Was there never a chance for this uh, dude, game? I. Probably like if Brad was down, he and I probably would have gone in there and cracked some skulls, busted some heads, but didn't hear about it. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, so like another Bandai Namco game, I forget the name of it, the treasure hunting one that's going to be free to play for oh, a year. Oh yeah, I feel like yeah, there's, similarly I mean, yeah. right now we can say don't make that game. Like you're going to lose money on that. Stop it. Because mm-hmm. I can, you can just tell it just looks like a cheap game. You know, it just looks like which. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a question because some people will really like that. Again, if you really like fighting games, if I like, I love arena-based fighting games. So I'm gonna play Rise of Incarnates. I don't care. I don't need the game to look any better than it is, or necessarily control any better. But like that, just uh, yeah, that just looks so by the numbers. It just looks so like. But I think um, I think one of the problems, like we look at Street Fighter V's marketing campaign, right? Like they put out these trailers, you know, and they're introducing new characters. You don't know anything about them, but they're like making an event of that character and showing you why they're cool. They didn't do anything like this that I know of. And that's what I think the thing is, is like they should have been highlighting characters, showing them like what their abilities are, what makes them cool, and like getting you interested in the game. And it's just like... But if you don't have Street Fighter bucks, do you think it's smarter to kind of announce your game in the beginning when it's going in development or do you think you should just wait until right when it's coming out drop a couple trailers drop a couple bombs right at the end put all your marketing on the back end and then release it like what what happened in this marketing campaign did they run out of money or is this just to market it i think i bet there's trailers out there Mm -hmm. i bet there are trail character trailers for this game out there that we're clearly ignoring we didn't do our job uh, well, there's no, I, no that's the thing not. is, no, Hubert. That's the question. It, like, should we cover games like this? Should we treat them all with respect? Should we be like, you yeah. know, what? Rise of Incarnates could really do? I bet it. a ton no. of people worked their asses off on this game. No, many did. Yes, <laughs> I think that's a shame. What do you think, Ian? My my thing is like, and I mean, maybe I'm wrong because with this particular game, I can't exactly pinpoint what I think it's cloning. But like, games like this just have to me. A feel like it's like in the mobile game space where one game is successful and then there are like 4,000 clones. Like Minecraft has like 400 clones. Dragon Quest is yeah. cloning Minecraft. Right. And like everything is cloning everything else and like you just sniff them out immediately. Like there's some MOBA coming out or out already on the PS4 that is free to play. I can't remember what it's called, but I like took one, one look at it and I'm like, oh yeah, you're just trying to be this and it's it, it's like c tier copy stuff well yeah you want to know what that is it's also from bandai namco supernova oh, what, yeah. what is supernova yeah it's basically it, it's like a moba but it looks like they just took all their assets it's like a cheap starcraft copy this is fun i've never heard yeah. of supernova until this it's, point it's real bad ben, ben had to do like a preview on it it was like it's like dota 2 with like uh starcraft assets somebody bought off of fiverr or something <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, the budgets might not be that ridiculous. I mean, I, I guess they're obviously going for, like, we'll just make a bunch of free-to-play and see what sticks. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's it's kind of like the Rotten Tomatoes philosophy now. It's the best marketing for your movie is to make a good movie. If everyone right. likes your movie and you score high on the tomato movie, to, tomato meter, everyone's going to be like, oh, man, 97%. Let's check this movie out. Oh, it looks great. Same thing with the game. If this game ruled... And reviews came out, and everyone was like, yo, Rise of Incarnates, this game is awesome, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10. Everyone would hear about it, everyone yeah. would say, oh, check well, this I mean, out. That's kind of what, what, yeah, what's been happening with Undertale, right? Like, everyone's talking about the game, and like, what, where did this come from? Mm. Um, and this is just sort of like, well, we're going to put out this unfinished game and see if people like it, and apparently people don't. It launched with a bunch of characters. I, don't, I, I think even if it was finished, 
even if it launched with 30 characters, we'd be telling the same story so many well, months later. And, like, it's weird, too, because I think Huber's right. I think that's, like, the... I mean, obviously, that's the best way to do things. Is the best make, marketing is make, making a good is game. Is making a good thing. Yeah. But then there are other games that are, like, inexplicable... Inexplicable huge successes, like Warframe, where, right. like, every human being I've ever heard talk about Warframe, the best thing I've ever heard anyone say is, oh, yeah, it's pretty cool, it's all right. It, it, you know? it, it, it came out, it was like those moment in time right. things, free to play at the PS4 launch. But it's still not a lot making of games crazy play. money, oh, it's apparently. Yeah. Yeah. It still yeah. makes, like, buku bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, who's playing this? You know what I think Warframe has going for it is actually a, a unique aesthetic. I think everyone looks like a it, super freaky ninja, and I think looks, it has... It, it looks, looks like cool. MDK to me. Yeah. Remember MDK? Yeah. God, that game was so depressing and, like and a weird baby? looking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. It had was to like pass weird on that. Uh, Todd McFarlane stuff. What there are, are really good games, though, that don't get anything. <laughs> you know, like... Yeah. They don't get any attention. Like, like that World of Warcraft? You guys ever hear about that? Yeah. No, yeah, like, that I mean, like off. Tearaway. You know, it's <clears> like <throat> they put it out on oh, yeah. PS Vita. Well, because no one's a, no one had has some Vita. buzz, and then like, they put it on PS4, and it still doesn't have any buzz. Yeah. No, that that really came and went. To be honest, that was weird. Because yeah. it was perfect on the Vita. It's beautiful on the Vita. That game is yeah. amazing. But then now this one just feels like a re-release. So everyone's like, eh. But like, I, I'd even put it on Sony. Do you know what I mean? Like. <sighs> Their commercials don't feature Tearaway. They feature all the third-party games because they know they'll sell more. Yeah. And so it's like, again, it's like, what what is their job? What is our job? Mm -hmm. Do we feature Tearaway more or do we feature the games that people care about more? Well, it's a balance. If you yeah. want to feel yeah. good, play Tearaway. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Okay. I liked it on the Vita more than the PS4, though. Well, to talk to Huber's point, though, about advertising, like, I do think... I, I did, you know, I, I know a lot of you guys are, like, not familiar with the trailers. Like, I do remember these. I watch all the trailers. Like, I, rem oh, okay. I remember the trailers for this game. And uh, I, I just recently played uh, Battleborn at an event, at a, a preview event. I got to try out some new stuff. And they showed off a trailer that I'd seen before that, like, clearly is designed for, you know, fans of Gearbox. It's, like, it's, it's the humor of Gearbox. It's the, you know, like, they literally have text that pops up. And they're like, if you like this, if that sounds cool, if you like this character, here's this crazy thing he does. If that's your type of game, if then play Battleborn. Exactly. But eight-year-olds are like, this is great. You know, it's like it's speaking to their audience. It's not like we are making the next generation of shooters. It's like, <laughs> no, we're making a very silly character-based, fun, colorful, you know, like, you know, crazy objectives, modes you probably haven't played before, a couple of genres, like, smashed together. That's our game. Whereas, like, Rise of Incarnates was just, like, fighting. Like, I need more. I need something else that really clearly says, like, it, you know, it, it, either this is the most, the best game you've ever, best fighting game you've ever played in your entire life, that's why you need to play it, or it fits into this very specific part of the industry. If you're this type of gamer, I think you would enjoy this. Hi, I'm the developer, I'm talking to you. And like, I watch that trailer, and I'm like, I don't feel like anybody's responsible for this. I feel like it's just a little gameplay I, edit I for a logo it, it, at the it end. It didn't done. have a good aesthetic, which, that, you know, yeah. again, maybe that's the biggest key is like, have something that looks likable. I would love, I would love to hear a trailer for a game like this that's like really something really specific and bizarre where it's just like super factual like if you love two two on two multiplayer arena fighting games set in a futuristic <laughs> world with body transformations then rise of incarnates is the game for you it's like we'll get a couple, yeah, that would have we'll been something actually a lot of the times the japanese listings have like really weird like when it says genre it's like it's not it's not a genre it's almost like an anti-genre it's like specifically like saying something that could only apply to that one game <laughs> <laughs> but then starting a genre like stylish genre action i think now. is a perfect name for a genre Don't i love stylish her. action mm -hmm. i love i love the uh they've started doing like pg-13 for a scene of sci-fi graphic nudity violence <laughs> so it's like really Ooh. bizarre specific what is stuff. that movie just various movies yeah it's like a a graph a a scary image a frightening image. I think I saw on one. Yeah. of them. I was like, whoa, what is at this? At fourteen of minutes gore. and eight seconds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You so blink. We, we kind of covered how they could have marketed three marketed a game like this better. Uh, I think that I don't know. I think that this game there was a problem way earlier than marketing. You know, mm -hmm. this game probably should not have been invested into. And I'm wondering how to tell video game developers to stop that. Stop oh, making Supernova. Like, exactly, Blood. How do we <laughs> tell them to stop doing that? How do we tell I Ben just, and Amgos? I just did, but okay. Well, none of these seem like yeah. major initiatives, so that's the thing. It's not like, oh, no, you're bringing this huge franchise back, and you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's tough to just, like, jump in front of someone and be like, don't make that small game 
that has a free to play model that you can at any point just stop and work on another project. They did. You know, they like, just ditched it, man. It's, it feels like that's everything that they're doing. It's yeah. just like little tiny, you know, uh, well, attempts, and just hopefully one of these will catch and become a huge thing. I was thinking about free to play and how from a business side it's so good because like I was thinking about Starcraft because Legacy of the Void's coming out and Heart of the Swarm came out two or three years ago and they constantly maintain it and update it and balance it everyone that bought that game did it three years ago they're not really making any money off it other than esports yeah and they keep working on it and maintaining 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 I think you whereas, lose money on esports even yeah whereas Heroes of the Storm New skins, new heroes, constantly money, 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 forever yeah. coming in. So, well, they have BlizzCon, and there's there's no Bandai Con, mm -hmm. is there? <laughs> I mean, they have their their press days, but uh, not uh, really. Uh, Bandai is all toys. It's like so yeah. much of the revenue comes from toys at this point, which is pretty crazy. Maybe that's what they're hoping for this game. Crazy yeah. characters they want to sell. To sell some so toys. it's like yeah, for a game to survive, for, for a multiplayer game to survive, do you need? A monthly fee because you're constantly gonna have to update it or do you just make it free to play and then just add stuff as you go monthly that's what they think work, they can know? do it's that's that that second model is yeah. what they think they can get away with with mm -hmm. these games and maybe this will be a big lesson mm -hmm. yeah I think maybe this is just business as usual you know maybe like I, I get a feeling that like this moment was written in on paper when they first pitched the game they were just like and we'll we have this out that we can just we can totally pull out and then you know I'm sure there's all sorts of characters that are in the conceptual phases that are just no we sure. throw that in the fire. Diminishing returns. I, mean, I think Tekken. Brandon was right when he said like, um, because companies have to try things and see what sticks because you never know what's going to be a ridiculous success. Like, who would have known that the Dota mod would have taken off the way it has and or invented Minecraft. a genre? Yeah, right. dude, you're right. Yeah, and, but like the other thing I would say is like. It's it's the same as like any project I I do or like anything like the best advice is if you like it, then other people will probably like it. Yeah. So like if someone is, is making that. a game where it yeah where if you're working on a game where you just feel like ugh gotta go in and make Rise of Incarnates now. Yeah. Stop there's making someone that out game. There. Mm -hmm. If you're right. a Rise of Incarnates fanatic, let us know. Let us know. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'd know. love to read a comment yeah. from a fanatic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Explain sure. why. Yeah. And oh, yeah, what absolutely. went wrong. Uh, I want to move on. Speak of what went wrong. Uh, so <laughs> last week we talked at, at great length about microtransactions. Uh, and then uh, we talked about Destiny, which just added microtransactions last week, uh, where you can spend U.S. dollars or any currency that you have on uh, in-game currency, silver. And you know what? No big whoop. It's all on emotes. Yeah. All, all you can buy is emotes. Here's the thing. Uh, when you go to the store, the store has a, a unique feature in that anything you, can, you buy with silver, you can return within a certain length of time. Uh, there's a caveat to that. You cannot return any consumable items. There's no consumable items uh, at the store right now. It's all emotes. You can't consume those. So, of course, there are consumables coming. And then, on top of that, uh, a data miner found some interesting things. I love data miners. Do you really? Yes. For like Dig in there. <laughs> see what they're hiding. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and so, Huber, I read the list of things, and honestly, I kind of don't get them. Can you explain what the data miners found, or miner actually, yeah. found for sale at the store for silver, potentially, like information for? So there's a list of like eight to 10 things that range from uh, class-specific boosts, like a Titan, instantly boost to level 25, Warlock, Hunter, instantly boost to level 25. Um, there's another one that increases the XP gain for your character, so you can just level up to 40 faster. And there's ones that uh, apply to your subclass, because the subclass takes even longer than the main class, uh, that increase your subclass speed of, of XP gain. But what really got me going was the ones that referred to increase the drop rates in the King's Fall raid. Mm. Uh, it was consumables to to increase the chances of getting better gear when in the raid. Is it like the thing that uh, Eris sells, where it's like if you have twenty of these, when you beat King's Fall, you get different stuff? Uh, I would say it's similar to like Zer's Three of Coins. There's an item that you can buy from a vendor that comes on the weekends. His name is Zer. Uh, he sells a Three of Coins. You pop it. It's a consumable. Uh, so you use it, and then when you kill a scold enemy, 
your chances of an exotic dropping are high. Uh, if it doesn't well, drop, seven percent. Yeah. If it doesn't drop, you can pop another one. It's a consumable. You use it, and the odds are even higher of it dropping until you finally get that drop. <laughs> that ain't right. Just keep so, popping. I mean, it's yeah. fine. You spend strange but you're coins. Spend, on yeah, it. yeah, strange like, coins. Very, very valuable currency. I, in the I game. do enjoy the terminology popping. Popping. You know, it's just like <laughs> it's like pop, pop a pot in uh, World of Warcraft. I mean, my thing is like all of this is meaningless. Like it's just stuff to get your character to forty faster, which only takes like three hours, four hours anyway. And then leveling up your subclass faster is like, yeah, I mean, like... It takes maybe four hours to max level in Destiny? No. From From 32, yeah. Oh, from 30, yeah. Like, where oh, okay. I was at, where I was already at in the... Th yeah, but I mean, when you bought the new character, or the new... When the Taken King, King came out, uh, they gave you one thing that levels you to twenty five. I don't think these character. are. The, I don't think these are for people. I think they're for you making a new character. Right. New, yeah. Yeah. But right. what gets me is they're the drop rate. In like a day or two. I mean, yeah. th their whole philosophy. Luke Smith. I went to a went to a Destiny event, and the whole big thing about Taken King was, was yo, we don't want you to buy your weapons from a vendor like vanilla Destiny. You would grind strikes, get currency and just buy the best stuff from the vendors in the tower. That's not fun. It's like, oh, how'd you get that? Oh, I just bought it. Yeah. It's like, no, they want you to go out in the world, go on some quests, find this epic item or this this chess piece or this gun. Pop some consumables. Pop some right. consumables, <laughs> find these in the world. But here's That's the their whole big thing. And now they're saying like, buy this to increase the chances right, of finding right. it. But here's the here's the important thing, Huber, is like, Doing it the way the way you want it to be done takes sixty hours or more. But to reward get something good. Any, any my MMO philosophy of life, World of Warcraft, anything, Warhammer Online, every MMO, you need to reward the dedicated players. That is the that is those are that's that type of game. You don't want to reward some guy in World of Warcraft that logs in on the weekend and plays for an hour versus the guy who is has his raiding party, he's in IRC, he's talking to his clan, he's raiding, he's taking time off from work, he's fighting to get that gear. Like, actually, those people are the ones that need to be rewarded. Actually, the opposite is true, because if you're running a game, the person who's playing it constantly is costing you more money if they're not putting money into the system. This is the same reason that Apple gave up on Final Cut, because power users are too expensive, whereas charging soccer moms 300 bucks for Final Cut X is way better business model because you're going to sell more of them. So, like, people who are getting yep. sick of grinding in a game to get a good item because they're now they're outclassed. They're like, oh, I wanted to do the raid, but it's taking too long. I don't have this much time. Reward the dedicated. No, then they pay, and then you make money. You're taking advantage of those people yeah. who are not dedicated enough to play the game. They're that a is business. what that is. Yeah. They're a business. Yeah, of that's course. the problem is you're talking about yeah, like Final, but I disagree with Final Cut is software. It's not fun. It's not a video game. Yeah. The problem is this is a video game people are spending time in. They're yeah. going point, into this world. Right. Mm -hmm. My point is uh, power users cost you money. Charging people who don't have a lot of time makes you money. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. And they want to yeah. make money. Completely they do agree. want to make money. Uh, it I should, bums me out. But I think the dedication, time dedication versus dollar dedication, like, I mean, whatever. Like, people who are paying money, like, like if it meant I didn't have to do that freaking sword quest, <laughs> I would have paid him, like, five bucks to just be like, give me this fucking sword. Yeah, but sword. now That's you have so that sword, man. I'm so jealous odd. of you, Ian. I don't have that sword. That's, That's awesome, right. man. You that have mission it. is the worst. <laughs> it's terribly designed, and I should not have done it. I should not have wasted my life on that sword, but I did. <laughs> Uh, I want to read Luke Smith's uh, tweet because he did say, to his credit, we aren't nor are we planning on selling consumables that buff King's Fall drop rates for silver. That is the only thing that he said is untrue uh, based off the things that were mm -hmm. data mined. He clearly saw the same list we did. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a stinky leak, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's the only one that he debated. And so it seems like all the other ones level up your subclass. Yeah, uh, I'm, those fine. Are all I'm happening. fine with that stuff. It's when you start getting into the high-end gear, mm -hmm. the stuff that you really need to work for. I mean, because like Ian said, leveling to 40 is no big deal. Like, when you get max level, that's when the game really starts. So I, I have no problem with those. That's but. a bit of a gray area, though, Huber. I mean, it's times so you're like you're like here's this thing that's gonna cut out you know four hours of game time. I'm upset about that. Here's this thing that's gonna cut out ten hours of game time. Mm -hmm. I'm I hate that. Yeah. So it's like it's <laughs> I'm, I'm not hours. I guess no, no, no I'm not okay like with it. It just time? doesn't bother me as much. I'm still I still think 
like when they announced microtransactions, I was so nervous. I said, as long as they're purely cosmetic and have no impact on the game, like, I'm okay with that. The King's Fall one is the worst. Those are like the lesser of two evils. That's Here, all I'm here's saying. another counter argument, Huber, that I just thought of is like, I would agree with you more if it was actual like dedication to reward, right? But like it's random drops. So like to an extent, yeah. Yeah, but you could get I mean, yeah, it does key off your light level a little bit, but like Omar got my roommate got an exotic auto rifle day one and he's still using it because it's that good, you know? And, like, he got that, like, three hours into us playing it. I had to, like, grind forever to get enough legendary marks to buy this scout rifle because it was, like, the only weapon. I, like, I had I had shitty guns for, like, a week and a half, and it was not fun. And, like, if I could have increased my drop rate, I don't know. No, 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 no. That's a flaw in the game. That's not no, like yeah, a... No, yeah, that's oh, what I'm God. saying. Yeah. This is not a I'm well-designed not a... game, yeah. so paying the money to fix a thing is silly, but, like, who gives a shit? <laughs> Me? Not really I a, do. I'm I not do. really a fan the, of drop rates. The people out there that are <laughs> putting are stupid. so much time into this game... That's like their choice, dude. If I want to put in money instead of time, that saves my life. I die less early in my life having wasted time on destiny i mean to me it's, you can say that about any I would, game I would ever right. a, a system right. that's more is like you kill this thing you know what you're gonna get if you want to do it again you get a slightly better version of it then oh maybe if i fight this thing 12 times the 11th yeah. i might get but it. i mean the problem with that is then people stop playing the game because they have the thing they wanted and that's not what destiny wants they want you to play forever they want you to be trapped and now they can charge you to be trapped <laughs> Uh, to to wrap up the conversation. Oh, actually, yeah, Luke. Also, he tweeted. Luke Smith also tweeted that uh, they do plan to change the balancing of drops and things like that. They they want to make it a little more uh, lenient, give you better things. He he acknowledged that's a problem. That'd yeah. be good. I mean, they've improved it from before, but it's yeah. still not wonderful. The game has been constantly improved for a year. Uh, for so my question is to wrap up this conversation: Should Destiny Two just be an MMO? Should they just stop doing this? Yeah. Well, what does that what, mean? Yeah, what, it's already what? an MMO. Should it what just would they be? Have to change? Should it just be like a monthly fee that you pay? No, because oh. I feel like everyone's getting like. No one should right do now. monthly fees anymore. I That's would never say, I would say, if they could do it like World of Warcraft, where at least every month or every other month you're getting new meaningful content, then why not? By adding more quests, by People adding more pay. gear, by adding another raid. By doing that stuff. Yeah, I feel like, honestly, like Activision just tricked every tri tricked a huge audience into playing an MMO. They're they just like, hey, here's a, a space shooter from yeah, Bungie. Yeah, because you're, you're basically doing the same thing, but you're buying it in different ways. It, yeah, it yeah. breaks my heart to hear you guys you think just about, grinding for You think loot. about your expectations for like the, the new stuff that happens to Destiny. Like, Taking King came out, and like a lot of people just left. So like, I didn't have to cancel a subscription. I didn't like... I, I'm not sitting there burning $30, $40 in the two, three months that I'm not playing a game that I'm constantly thinking about, like, gosh, should I just cancel that? And so then Taken King comes out, and so then if I'm paying a subscription, then I have the idea, like, this better be great. Yeah. Taken King better be really, really good because I've given them a lot of money and I better get that money back. Versus, yeah, Destiny, whatever. And all of a sudden, oh, Taken King's good? Oh, I'll play Taken King. And then now I'm back. I and I didn't saying. have expectations. Yeah, absolutely. Now it's just positive stock. Yeah, now everybody's exactly. happy. As opposed to like, no, we had this financial Destiny could not you know, charge limitation. a monthly fee. I th You're probably right. I'm still just upset about pay to win because people financially but it's only pay should not yeah. be at a disadvantage. Versus, like The people that are putting in all that time, what if they have hours to spend on the game, but they don't have any money. What if they can't get a job or they're just a, a kid in high school or something going to school and playing Destiny? They then don't have a job. they've got all the time in the world. But, but why should the rich have the advantage? It, right. it but literally the comes advantage? down to socioeconomic <laughs> class warfare No, it doesn't. Someone it who, does. Someone who plays this game for 200 hours is going to be better at it in the three circumstances where that actually matters. The, this is not a game where, like, you have a real advantage over someone. Iron Banner, you have a huge right. advantage. But if, like, I could buy all the guns in the universe and I suck ass at multiplayer. <laughs> like, you are got to be good in multiplayer to be good in multiplayer. I don't you know. Still pay to win. I don't know. If, if it, it happens. Is. Pay, to, I don't think pay it is. to get good. Plus, they also, they also have, like, level uh, bonus, like, limits in the multiplayer to, like, counteract that. Not an Iron Banner. 
I thought they did. A lot of Destiny knowledge getting dropped. I learned yeah. a lot today. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Destiny players. TLDR it's, Destiny it's, you know is fun but bad. No, I want to <laughs> Yeah, because, like, hanging out with two other people, like, being sick space superheroes is still fun. Like, yeah, I've, been playing, I've been playing yeah. with Community every yeah. couple nights. Played with Swordfish last night. Played with Blair and Meg. Like, it's a fun game. Just hang out. I know. It is. And so I don't mean to be like, oh, it's a travesty that people are playing it. Because it's not. It's still a cool game. Uh, just some of that stuff bums me out. Let's move on. Uh, oh, the Overwatch beta starts on October 27th. Bye, Destiny. <laughs> Now, we're all going to be playing No Man's Sky on October 27th. Ooh, so that is... Okay, we'll skip to that because he even brought it up. October 27th is a big day. Uh, yeah. That is the day that Halo 5 Guardians is released. Uh, that is the day that Sony has its press conference at Paris Games Week. Uh, there's a rumor that No Man's Sky might be announced as, like, it's available today. Do you think that this is Blizzard... This is, like, conspiracy tinfoil hat, but do you think this is Blizzard? I know it's not, but what if, what if someone in a back room in Blizzard is like, Let's let's put the Overwatch beta out on October 27th just to prevent a few people from buying an Xbox One. I don't I mean that's what I wanted to ask today. I don't think it's too crazy. I want to know if all of those things happening on the same day is a coincidence or not. Is it purely coincidence? It's like Overwatch is this is the PC uh leg in this fight. If No Man's Sky does come out, which I mean, oh my god, if it did, but like that would be Sony being like we win. And then Halo is like, eh, Xbox One. No, it's no, it's not like that. I don't think the crossover with <laughs> it's not like that. I don't think there's much crossover with the press conference in Halo. Uh, but Overwatch feels yeah, like very <laughs> Blizzard very does pointed. what Blizzard yeah. wants. That, Cause that's my other idea, is like Blizzard probably isn't even aware of those other two yeah, things. Yeah, they've never on heard of Halo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what, They're is, in what is Microsoft? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm really torn on this. I, I, like those are th three big events. Brandon, where do you stand? Is it coincidence or not? Um, I yeah. The only thing that would be suspect is Blizzard. You know, I don't think you don't plan a press conference around stuff. Like I think that I think they're totally in a in a in a uh, in a tunnel, just kind of like you know uh, foreseeing what they need to prepare for that. But um, yeah, I think Blizzard does have a lot of control over <laughs> whether uh, well, you know when that beta starts. But, yeah, but at the same time, you know, they their whole thing is we release our game when it's done. They're on such a like you said, in a tunnel, making their game, and then now it's like just so happens. Yo, all right, we're ready for a for a closed beta of Overwatch. Here we go. Let's do an interesting thing. On that night, the night of October twenty seventh, which game will be most viewed on Twitch? Overwatch or Halo Five? Overwatch. Yeah, Overwatch. Big Absolutely. Time. Yeah. Wait, why let, are we all saying that? If they that? let you stream it. All right, fine. I'll take Halo Five. Why are we all saying Overwatch? It's well, the it's first time you've seen the game. Being first time you've seen the game. It's on PC, so it's easier to stream. But like, kind of. Yeah. Uh, I mean, mostly, I mean, Twitch really comes down to personalities the most, I think. Like, when you click on Hearthstone, like, the, the most viewed one is, like, an established person. You yeah. know what I mean? And those guys are going to be playing Overwatch. Do you think they'll be playing? So what is the deal with Overwatch? Well, think about this. Like, if you, if you were to go to Twitch when Halo 5 comes out, there's probably going to be somebody in there playing some Halo 4. You know, playing, there's going to be somebody in there playing some Halo Master Chief Collection, where it's like, there's just Overwatch. That's it. <laughs> you know, like, now you search for that word and, like, that, you know. That, that, yeah, that's going to be a major thing. No, you're saying search engine optimization is the reason why Overwatch wins? Um, no, I'm just saying just the just the, the mind share of what's happening from Blizzard versus what's happening from you 343. Might get, There's you just might a lot of some, other Halo things going you on. You might get some people talking about nitty-gritty uh, techno uh, or uh, things in XCOM. Why is that? What? Because Overwatch was a mechanic in XCOM. You could, oh my you god! Could, yes. <laughs> worth um, it. No, I'm gonna say that one was worth it. with Firewatch. Yeah. yeah. Which I didn't I, realize was made by the people who made Transmit, oh, which is so an good. FTP program. Like they've made software up to this point. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. And they were like, "Yeah, we normally make this kind of stuff, but we made a game." I was like, "Whoa! I didn't know that was the same company." That's cool. Um, what? Yeah, I think I think Overwatch is just it's like a newer thing. Like it's just yeah it. It's more interesting because, like Halo, there's there's definitely a lot that they've changed with Halo Five, but Overwatch is it's just a totally different dynamic, and so people are going to be curious. And it's closed beta, right? So yeah. everyone's going to have so Halo, so, so people are going to be, you know, maybe sick of Halo streams by then, and and you know, wanting to check out what's what this new thing is. Sick of Halo streams by the night that it comes out. Absolutely. There's going to be a lot of streams <laughs> before it comes out. Oh man! Uh, but all, that's oh, a good point, included. Though. You're right. Scarcity will breed streams. Yeah. Uh, here's but here's what is. Oh, and that's the other thing. You could be playing Halo. You could yeah. and not have access to the Overwatch exactly. beta. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, you're right. Maybe that wasn't an interesting bet. Overwatch. I, I don't get it. I, I look at the screenshot we have up here in our studio. 
this just looks like a dumb game to me. Oh my god. <laughs> If you're just a listener, all I see is some cowboy. You yeah. picked that screenshot. He's yeah. got he's got a a, a, a buckle. Of First of all, that's belt. McCree. Second of all, before you judge this game, <laughs> you need to watch all of the character you're right. lore I videos. Watch, I should watch the video on this guy. This is a game bursting at the seams with creativity. Okay, Blizzard has had the shackles of Warcraft, Starcraft, and Diablo for decades now. Okay, even Hearthstone is a spin-off, technically, of of Warcraft. It shares that universe. Yeah. Heroes of the Storm is a MOBA, but they still have those shackles. They still have the same yeah, exact characters. Still using all those heroes. This is a MOBA too. The, the, it's easy to look at this game and say, "All right, it's it's another Team Fortress Two clone." They are they are taking it to a whole nother level. I mean, giving the the sheer amount of characters they've revealed and the game isn't even in beta yet is insane. I mean, Team Fortress has what eight or nine classes. Getting all these characters, all with unique different abilities. I mean, every character they've shown. Again, it's just pure creativity. They have so many different move sets and and background stories. It's just insane already. Um, I, one of the reasons why I'm really excited about the genre uh, and and why I see just little flashes of brilliance in Battleborn is like e even like in in uh, uh, League of Legends and, and Heroes of the Storm. Like, yeah, my abilities are going to change, but like I, the button set is still the same as far as like one. I got my ability one, two, three, four. You know, it's like I'm still clicking to go places. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's still kind of a similarity between. It's really in the dynamics of like whether you're healing or just tanking or doing damage or like how fast your character is or you know like uh, whether you're you know, spend most time like selecting your teammates or selecting enemies. Whereas in like you switch to any of the characters in this game, everything changes. Yeah. Like what you know, whether I'm now focusing on you know, because it's in, it's in first person. So like mm -hmm. the the way you view the environment Everything. totally changes. It's like the way I, they I move might, through the environment. I might every see character. like even in when I was playing Battleborn, like there were parts of the environment in multiplayer maps where like I'd see a ledge and be like, I can't. I know I can't jump to that point, so I'm just going to walk past it mm -hmm. and go over to there. Whereas if I'm playing with like a flying character, it's like I can totally get up there. I can yeah. teleport up there. I can. Hanzo I can grab can. that. That enemy can right climb there. Walls. Oh wait, I can't snipe that enemy because that's not even what my class does. So it's a bummer I can't do range stuff, but you get close to me and it's over. Mm -hmm. You know, so like I usually always pick a class I'm gonna I'm gonna use. This is the first time where I've looked at Overwatch. Again, there's, they've shown like 15, 20 characters. I want to use every single character in that game. Even McCree. Dude, McCree's awesome. I'm kinda, yeah, I'm kind of down with McCree. McCree is hype. <laughs> Look at his John Marston. No, it's just Bamp on his belt buckle. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a little weird genre mixing there. I don't like the junkyard characters. They seem kind of dumb to me. They're dude. One of them can gr grab a, grab a guy with a hook, pull him towards him, and shoot him in the face with a shotgun. Oh, that's pretty cool. No, that sounds like a League of Legends move. I don't understand the difference. I get they're both great. Wait, let me put it this way: like I don't see anyone else in our little or like with versus Halo, like. Nobody else in our little cadre of freaky weirdos here at Game Trailers <laughs> is freaking out like that about Halo. You it's know? Ben and I. Oh, I see what you're saying. Ben right. and I played. And I think that extends to the real world too. Ben and I played Overwatch one year ago at BlizzCon. Wait, you've played it? Yeah, yeah. we we played oh, it. Oh, I didn't know at you played it. BlizzCon over a year ago, or basically a year ago. Yeah. When we came out of it, not even like cleansed of the hype. In our, in our right minds, we were like, they could release that right now. It is so good and ready and polished. I cannot even imagine how good this closed beta is going to be, seriously. That's why that announcement was such a home run. <sighs> they came out on stage, shit, like new cinema, like when and the, the game's the, ready. The best cinematic trailer you've <laughs> seen all year. Uh, plus, you know, <laughs> great game awesome gameplay trailer. trailer. Yeah. Oh, and uh, here, check it out. Yeah. That's the thing, like, Blizzard <laughs> makes bulletproof stuff, and when they make a mistake, they fix it. Yep. I respect Blizzard. Like a lot. Diablo they 3 good, yeah. stumbled out of the Diablo gate and has sucked. been so and redeemed now I in the love years. It. Yeah. Well, it's it, their community. Like we were talking yeah. about, like their their community is very important to them, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. to, to, to make yeah. them happy. So um, for the company, yeah, again, it's just, I, I, I just for the think people. As good as Halo 5 is, another Halo versus th this franchise that's unlike anything this developer has ever done before, that's yes. a, a, you know, obscenely popular developer. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's the new Team Forgers too. I mean, Valve has a reputation. I think Blizzard uh, in the last couple years has overtaken them, has dethroned them, especially in the PC world. Uh, Valve has kind of taken a back seat, focused more on business, Gabe Newell. No, and uh, no, no. And yes, 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 no. yes. If yes. you have the most played games yes. on Steam, they still have like top three. 
Yeah, from like 1996. This is going no, to got... destroy Team Fortress 2. Team Fortress 2 and will be CSGO? dethroned. This is going to dethrone CSGO, CSGO as well? No, CSGO is kind of in its own world, but I could see it taking a share of the market. Absolutely. They're going on eSports for this. It has a built-in, dedicated observer mode, full-on eSports push. This is their next big game. StarCraft has faltered. World of Warcraft has arenas, but that's kind of faltering as well. This is the next eSports. Mark my words. Let's bet. Let's bet, Bossman. I could, I'm not going to bet on it. Actually, I really <laughs> I appreciate everything you've explained. You know what, what I mean? What, what are the like, things too, Kyle? Yeah, just just to flip side, because I know I was talking about like your perspective as the characters. Yeah. It also affects your targets. It's mm -hmm. like if you turn the corner and you see someone at the end of that hallway that yeah. you're going to now have to fight, your tactics totally yeah. change depending you, on who that is. You, you see know? Reinhardt like, with a hammer or yeah. Hanzo with a bow range like character. It, it, it's just like Hearthstone. It's like if you're not taking the time to play with all those classes, you're going to have no idea what secret they just threw out. It's like, yeah. I've, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Whereas like, you, you know, it's like you play that class for a lot and then like you switch to another class and you see them put to like, like, oh, I'm going to secretly do this. Like, I know exactly what you're doing because I see what cards you have in play. Like, I know what that is. So it's like if I see some guy and it's like, am I going to throw a grenade at that guy if I know he can teleport? Probably not. You know? Like, am I going to waste this, like, one out, this, you know, uh, cool down that doesn't come back for 30 seconds on Blink or what's her name? Like, the, Tracer, yeah. Like, Tracer? No, because she's going to see it coming and go away. Yeah. And then, like, Whereas if it's the big tanky guy, yeah, I'm going to dump, drump, you know, you know my flamethrower on The beauty or of Blizzard, too, is that in addition to all that, like, super high level stuff, it's going to be super easy to jump super into easy, for so people fun. who aren't going to go that deep. Yep. That's Blizzard wins on, like, every yep. front generally, because yep. except for with StarCraft, I think, but, like, they always hit, like, casual and hardcore. Mm -hmm. And it's deep enough for both. Even even StarCraft, you have the campaign, and you can play at like the worst league in multiplayer, and and have a good time. Their their goal in StarCraft has always been you win like fifty percent of your matches, depending if you're the best or the worst. You win about half the time. I must be worse than the worst. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm probably not going to spend a lot of time in Overwatch, just for preference, you know, just because there's other there's lots of third person open world action games I would like to finish before the year ends, um, but. Uh, I'm still. I still recognize that this is just gonna totally dominate. But wow. like we like we were talking before, like Blizzard is a company that follows their passion. Like you really get the you really get the impression that they're everything they're working on. They're like, we love this. We've been putting care into it. But then they also have the twin prong of this fork <laughs> of awesomeness is that they do listen to the community and they say because you can get blinded when you're just like passion working, and then other people are like, no, this is bad, and they're like, oh, you're right, this is bad. We'll fix it. Oh man, Blizzard is cool. Even though I don't like like half of their games, I love Blizzard. <laughs> I love Blizzard. I, I love everything they're doing. I can't say that with anyone else. Everything I love they've done. Everything. Ever. Yeah, Diablo is the only thing I'm like, that, you know, not because it's not good. Dude, have you played Diablo three on the PS4? It's wonderful. I ha I'm sure it is. Give it a I shot. Know. <laughs> I know. For real, I, it's no, I know so good. No, I know exactly. I can imagine how that thing maps and to I a controller. If you sure. don't finish I Diablo three it. by the end of the year, uh. you. <laughs> He's actually playing Metal Gear Solid 5. He's doing it. For the record, yeah. Everybody was actually curious about that after that episode because that was your ultimatum. Yeah. Brandon right. Jones is playing Metal Gear Solid 5. I'm putting we more did it. I'm putting more because I got a review games. I yeah. should not be playing MGS5 right yeah. now, but it's very, very good. Cool. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about this very quickly. This is like a uh, did you hear about this? Uh, Block Ops 3, you can play the campaign out of order, it was announced. Or uh. not really, it was an interview with Eurogamer, it was discussed. The campaign can be played uh, in any order. You can play the last chapter first. You can play the middle chapter first and then play the last one and then play the first one. Uh, what do we think about that? I think it's... Does that mean... Do you ha does it like unlock a cutscene when you've played through everything? I don't entirely understand how that works. Uh, think of it like a Netflix series. Uh -huh. uh, you can just watch any episode you want. Yeah. I think it's fine I because mean, uh, the... the Percentage of people that finish these campaigns is so small. Very, yeah, crazy small. It's so small, and it gives them a chance if somebody is raving to them about Mission 5, you gotta play Mission 5, it's yeah. the only one. Then they can be like, okay, I'll play Mission 5, then go back to multiplayer. Right. Uh, and then for the people that love the campaign, like I'm sure you and you know, me and Jones, everyone's just going to go through in the proper order. Yeah. So I don't think it's harming well, anyone. Well, they, they name the levels, too. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, dude, Outbreak. Play Outbreak? Yeah. Oh, dude, so good. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'll go through. Like, yeah. uh, uh, level two of um, Advanced Warfare, without a doubt, is the best level of that game. Where you're, like, driving around with Spacey, and he's oh, yeah. showing you the facility, and, mm -hmm. like, just the, it, oh, it, it mirrors, it like, starts, starts in the simulation. In the oh, yeah, yeah, dude. That it's level's just, great. Awesome. It, it kind of comments on, like, it's kind of like a fabricated Call of Duty level within yeah. a Call of Duty level. Yeah. yeah it's it's very very clever um so just be yeah it'd be great if you played that and you're like i'm not in a multiplayer i'm and not gonna waste time with the first mission yeah, yeah i'll just jump in there yeah. 
it does make me nervous about the campaign, though. Because Why? there have been some really good, uh, I think Black Ops 1, was that the one where you're in like the chair the whole time being tortured? Was that Black Ops 1? 2. Was it 2? Black Ops one? 2? Uh, whichever one where you're like... Maybe one. Uh, one. I don't know if I... Uh, I know one. people are like, okay, one. one. Yeah, so they, they, they do a ruse, a character is revealed to be something that he's not and it's very clever because the game is kind of lied to you like throughout half the game so I thought that was really interesting and uh, there are some you know uh, uh, Advanced Warfare 2 puts you in the shoes of a guy murdering tons of people in an airport you know there's lots of like moments that are very personal and very interesting uh, as far as like their approach to you know the, the morality of war and when they announced four player co-op, I was like, oh, well, I guess that's gone in Black Ops 3. Just that, that moment. Kind of, that that yeah. character identity. That mm-hmm. like, no, I am this guy. Yeah. And it just seemed like when you're adding three more players into it, it's just like, hey, you're, you're all soldiers, whatever. It's mm-hmm. it's more important what the people around you are doing, kind of what the world, like, kind of, uh, you know, the, the events, you know, that like kind of exist throughout all of the missions, not necessarily this one in particular. And then this announcement's like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be attached to any of these people. If they're literally, it's like, you can play them out of order. It doesn't matter, you know. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. Like level four, five, you know, whatever. <laughs> but you know, you look at it. You look at the the track record. I mean, Black Ops one and two. Those are those are some of the strongest campaigns in Call of Duty. And you look at what Halo is doing with you know having Master Chief surrounded by his team and Locke mm. surrounded by his team and giving each of those characters an identity. So, but I ha- we have what have we heard about yeah, the characters? Exactly. This? You know, I I, yeah. I think yeah, I think they're really stepping back and like multiplayer zombies. <laughs> That'll be focus, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then Always. just that concept of like, oh, you know, like just four player co op. That's all you need to say. You yeah. don't really need to get into the characters, the story. Yeah, I think that really has a lot to do with the matchmaking, just so that people can just jump in. Oh yeah, that's you it. know, so you know, you can always get a group of four. So it's a great point too. That's a really good point. Yeah, I, like that. I don't. I think it's cool to see a unique idea come out of Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. That's rare, huh? Like was like, oh, nobody's <laughs> nobody's done that before. It's like, yeah, that's actually, yeah, you did it. Like they they are doing things different. They did it. We can't say they're not changing anymore. Uh, okay, so let's move on to. Well, you're the one who started this conversation. Uh, we'll go with this one from Cool Guy Sports. Uh, do you think that Nintendo will keep glasses less 3D in their next lineup of consoles? Nintendo pretty much perfected the technology with the new 3DS, making it far more intuitive and comfortable to use. Was their willingness to research and invest into improving the concept a sign of things to come? In the same way, one can say that the DSi shop was integrated had <coughs> and integrated cameras was a sign of things to come with the 3DS Wii U. Or will Nintendo let the gimmick die and consider it to be too expensive to be worth including in the future hardware? I fear it is the latter, but I personally would be greatly saddened if we ever, if we never see glasses-less 3D utilized in its full potential on a high-resolution screen displaying HD graphics. So, does the future of glasses-less 3D excite anybody on the panel? Does it have a place in gaming? Uh, I imagine games like 3D World, Mario Kart 8, Captain Toad, and Stereoscopic 3D on my gamepad, and I poop my pants a little bit. Am I alone? You are not alone. I've also pooped my pants. Yes. Thinking about 3D? What a glasses glasses yeah. oh, list yeah. 3D. Yeah, yeah. I think oh, yeah. I think about glasses 3D like VR. You know, it's just when I see it, I'm like, that's cool. Not there yet, but keep on trucking. You mm-hmm. know, like, but it's it's creepy. Like when you're at like a trade show, you're at like Comic Con or something, and I like walk by a TV and be like, what what is happening right now? And it's like, oh, it's 3D, but I can't I can't stare at that for longer than 10 seconds. But that's cool. You know, <laughs> and it's like it'll get yeah, there. You know, it makes like, it'll you feel really point. uncomfortable. Those glasses. Well, it's just TVs. you can't move your head at all. Yeah, you're like, you know, uh, you just... it's cool, but I feel like I want to throw up. Yeah, but cool. it's like when you actually have 3D glasses on, and you do this. Like, don't do that. Oh, yeah, don't <laughs> don't bad. do that. Yeah, cool guy sports. I think honestly, it might be safe to assume that the NX will not incorporate. That Nintendo though. won't continue with it. Yeah, yet. but the technology yeah. will improve. There's no. There's Which no is so weird because as everyone is making the VR push, Nintendo is just gonna back out of it. Yeah. But I mean, 3D is nothing. Like VR, really? Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. That's a totally different thing. Except for that, VR is 3D because it has two yeah. screens. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, yeah. I mean, it's it's different to, to put a headset on than to have a flat mm-hmm. screen in front of you, looking at 3D. Well, but that would be it's a like good technologies way to go. that are waiting to hit the mainstream. You know, you can't go into a Best Buy right now and buy a glassless 3D television, and you can't go in and buy a VR system. Like you can't like that they're. You can't, no. buy, okay. you can't buy a VR system at Best Buy. No, no I don't mean a VR system. I mean the, the I don't. I don't know that there are any glasses list. They had uh, some phones. They had some glasses list 3D Best phones. Buy. Yeah, yeah list, list, that would make yeah. sense. Glasses, yeah. Yeah. Glass yeah. Glasses. Glasses. I have a question. Sure. What are the cool guy sports? 
Uh, cool guy sports is uh, this person's name. No, I know, but what would the cool guy sports be like? Snowboarding and surfing. Football is definitely cool guy. You know what? It could also. I would disagree. It could also be, be cool, cool guys you are not cool ports. It might be cool guys ports. I think that's what it is. <laughs> it's probably cool guys port ports, of New like Orleans, Port Royal. Yeah, that's a cool guy uh, port for sure. Yeah, yeah Port of New Orleans. Uh, um, a lot of bad on the Wii was a good port down there. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Uh, yeah, the port for cool guys. Yeah, not Silent Hill One. That was a bad port. We hate docks. That was a hate mean, docks. Mean. I think. I think it may. It may disappear. I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. I, yeah, I, I remember. I, yeah. I feel. I feel like. Yeah, Nintendo may just focus on making NX whatever it is and not worry about 3D right away. And then maybe, you know, again, like we don't exactly know what this weird line of devices looks like. Maybe some of them will be 3D and some of them won't be 3D, like the 2DS. Oh, that could be. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's really interesting. I remember going to a friend's house and their kid had a 3DS like the month it came out. And I like went over to him like he just got for his birthday or Christmas or something, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool, man!" And I'm like, I'm like, look, I'm like, look at this thing!" And I like slid up the 3D slider, and he was like, "What are you?" I'm like turned it off. He's like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "That's a whole new thing. This, this is the first game you've ever played on this system." And it, look, it's 3D, and he was just like offended, just like the, the way you show him shoving it 3D down. out of my face, you know? Like that was so telling to me, like, yeah. "Wow, yeah, it's, this is this is it. You, you're not even gonna play one game like that, you know?" It's yeah. like, wow, you know, it's like that did not not only didn't matter to him, it was like. Gross. Just like, <laughs> Offended. What, on, what? I'm so good. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I do not see them. I think it, with that, yeah. unfortunately. Which is, I'm kind of okay with. Uh, I yeah. love the 3DS. I have the 3D on. I like it a lot. I'm cool with that being the product for the rest of its life. Like, I can go back to my 3DS. They're not going to discontinue it like Rise of Incarnates. You know, it's just, it's always going to be there. I can always pick it up and have 3D in there. It's funny. You can, like, count on Nintendo for, like, innovating, but you can't count on them to, like, keep doing it. You know, like, they always, every time it's a new console, it's just kind of like, and there are small discs now. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> well, it's because every console, they make some weird choice just to, like, see. That's what you can count on. Yeah. They're like, we're going to make some dumb decision, not and fair. once it'll pay off. No way. We have shoulder buttons, thanks to Nintendo. We have D-pads, thanks to Nintendo. We have wireless controllers thanks to Nintendo. We got a lot. They weren't the first wireless thanks, controller. They were the first one that actually worked. Side bet? Yeah. If the really? NX fails, will Nintendo make another console? No. Yes. We're yeah. not going to know the... We're going to be dead and buried by the time we know the end of that. <laughs> the answer to that question, that's not... It's coming Wait, we soon. Wait, yeah. we're dying soon. NX is coming soon. Do you have something to tell us about, like, <laughs> no, talking about the, ne the next console... <laughs> Yeah, the the, the, con the Nintendo console after the NX. We you barely last. How many years, years away? Been? Here's the thing, here. Four. I think uh, I think if the NX fails quickly, uh, uh, they can react quickly and go in a completely different direction, mm -hmm. and they can still do another console even if NX fails. They've never shown an ability to do anything quickly. <laughs> they did a price drop on the 3DS quickly. That's true. That was a good reaction. I actually yeah, I, yeah, I admire that's them for true. that. I don't know. The NX has the, to be like some perfect new thing or there. But again, I think yeah. the way the NX the way the NX sounds, the way that it's being designed is more of an operating system than a, a console. I think that's exactly it. like they could do whatever. Okay, you don't like that form factor. Okay, we'll put out something else. Yeah. You know, and it will still be the NX. You're just getting a different flavor of it that has, that's you know, cool. more processing or whatever. Changing on the fly. I'm, I'm going to get a strawberry NX. <laughs> mm. I'm getting vanilla. It uh, is lunchtime. So let's do time for bets. Let's talk about our bets this week. Next week, Guitar Hero Live is launching on Tuesday, I believe. One of its modes is called GHTV. This is where it loads in random music videos all day long that you can play along to. Is that correct, Brandon? Is that's that is correct. Okay. Um, they are, yeah, they're in 30-minute blocks, and they're not totally random. You know, oh, okay. you, you know, like, a metal song is coming if you're listening to the metal thing. But do you The metal block. And you can see the songs. You can see a full list of all of the songs that are in GHTV. Do you think that it's like a TV station where there's somebody, like, programming it mm -hmm. song by song? Or do you think they, like, set up a list and then go home for the day? I think they said it's 30-minute blocks. So I think it's, like, a 30-minute actual, like, recorded thing. Right. And those all bump, on, bump into Are there, like, other. hosts and stuff? Personality? No, it's no just, hosts. Uh, oh, okay. Screens and stuff. So there are two channels. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to go on channel one before the, we record next week. The first full song, meaning like we're probably going to go to the channel, we're going to be in the middle of one song. The song after that, the first full song, how long will that music video be? And we're going from first frame of the music video to last frame of the music video. Because it might be a card that says like, here's the next song coming up, you know, but like actually when that 
the music video starts. Are yeah. they all music videos? And the song might end. The song might end before the music video ends. Like yeah, the song right. might cut out, and the music video might still keep. Are going. they all music like videos? Like Chris Tucker and Michael or is Jackson it like are still DDR, walking out. Where some of them are music videos, and some of them they're are all the music graphics. videos. Oh, all music okay. videos. Okay, uh, here's a little thing to help your bets. Uh, StatCrunch.com finds with 95% confidence that the average length of a top 100 song on iTunes falls between 215 and 239 seconds. Smashing the long-held myth that most songs are three minutes long. It's, it's, they're longer now. So, I believe it is Bloodworth's... Yes, Blood, you are first to reveal. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stay at 335. Three minutes, 35 seconds. Brandon Jones. Three minutes, 10 seconds. Whoa. Going, okay. Going small. Three minutes, 32 seconds. Ooh. Yes. Whoa. Okay. Huber is oh, confident. The, he's got, got the high. He got, got the high. high. Got the high. 347. Got Three the high. Three minutes, 47 seconds. Yeah, you got the high yes. for cheap, too. That's a cheap high. Yes. That's That's confident. Cheap high. All right. Let me lock those in. I like it. Um, okay. So let's talk about last week's bet. Uh, Dragon Quest Heroes, the world, the world trees woe in the blight below. I failed to name the title. Uh, will re- did release on Tuesday. Dragon Quest historically has had a hard time getting traction outside of Japan. Uh, case in point, at Dragon Quest, the official Dragon Quest Twitter account had 2,515 followers on Twitter. How many will there be at this point this week? At least in the super seat, bet 2,900. Blood bet 2,700. Jones. Uh, for you, Ben did not sabotage you last week. Nice. He bet three thousand. Uh, I bet five thousand too, thinking there would be a big surge. I even also bet that there would be verified at this point this week. Let me tell you something: they are not verified still. <laughs> the number of followers is two thousand eight hundred and fourteen. This one was a Ooh. squeaker, because anything above twenty eight hundred goes to super C. Anything below goes to blood, and it just came down to like just that hour. Because what, you did the, the math that they were getting one follower an hour? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Yeah, it's still like, fo- go follow them. Give Dragon Quest some credit. But, yeah, the point goes to the Super Seat. Super Seat. Uh, What's the score now? The current score, Super Seat 13, Blood yes. 14. Oh, we're going to get you, Blood. <laughs> Jones now has six. He has lost his lightning bolt, so he's just playing all six. six. <laughs> I'll trade it. I would trade that lightning bolt for a point any day of the week. I want a lightning bolt. I'll trade it back. Uh, and I have nine points. Uh, Huber, you win an assortment of things. First of all, you win the right and responsibility to tell everyone what your Twitter handle is, yours and yours alone. Okay. Uh, you get a final word. Anything that was said today that you disagree with, you now have the last <laughs> say on that. Uh, you get to uh, uh, sign us off with your trademark uh, catchphrase. And, and pick a video. You also get to promote is, any video you like. You're going to have to remind me of all these things. Cool, all absolutely. Right. Uh, Twitter is Michael P. Huber. There's one. The final word is that microtransactions are bad, don't pay to win, and reward the dedicated players. And then what? Uh, promote a video. <laughs> promote a video. Uh, bah, bah, bah. I did a part one of two part uh, Huber hype of Resident Evil. Get in the spooky Halloween mood. Uh, check that out. So you're talking about the entire series? Yeah. The, uh, part one is Resident Evil 0 through Code Veronica. And then uh, next week will be Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6. So we're just doing mainline, 0 to 6. Are you going to stay positive next week is my main question. Major, major, majority will be positive. <laughs> Wait, you're you're not gonna. Oh, sorry, you're not gonna talk about Revelations two. I can't I'll, rules. I'll, get, I'll throw it a bone. I'll give it a shout out because I do love it. But, but then you I also did, have to toss in Revelations. Yeah, then, nah, then nah. I gotta talk about Survivor and Just Dead scoop, Aim and Gaiden and, and Outbreak. It. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Just talk about I Revelations would, two. Put I it on your queue or for something. you, Ian. I will put it on the queue. I Good like call. Game. There it is. Cool. Spoiler yeah. alert. Spoiler alert. That's the queue. And then uh, throw us your trademark sign-off. Uh, I don't have a trademark sign-off, but, uh, you know, stay jolly, uh, stay hyped. It's a big week this week. Why? Because the master himself has released a new film, and that film is called Crimson Peak, and that master is named Guillermo del Toro. Check it out in a theater near you. Uh, I love. Let's <laughs> <laughs>